Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 3. In this video, we're going to learn about inequalities and the number line. All right, so the lesson objectives for today, we want to learn how to create and work with a number line for the whole numbers. And then also we want to learn about inequalities and a few symbols we're going to work with. So previously in our course, during the lesson on place value, we introduced the whole numbers. So the whole numbers start with zero. So that is the smallest whole number. And then they increase in increments of one out indefinitely. So after zero comes one, then two, then three, then four, then five. You just pick a spot because you can't list all of them and you're gonna stop and you can put the three dots there just to show that the pattern continues forever. So after five comes six, then seven, then eight, so on and so forth. Now we can visually represent our whole numbers using a horizontal number line. And so the leftmost notch here is going to correspond to the smallest whole number, which is zero. So see, this guy would correspond to this guy here. And then as we move to the right on the number line, each additional notch is corresponding to the next largest whole number. So this going to the right by one unit, this would be one. The next largest whole number is one. Then this notch going to the right would be two. The next largest whole number is two, so on and so forth. You're just increasing by one each time. So you go to three, then four, then five, then six, so on and so forth. Now, in a similar way to this guy right here where we put the three dots, we need to show that the whole numbers continue going out to infinity. So basically they continue forever. So what we're gonna do here is draw this little arrow and say that, hey, after 10 comes 11, then 12, then 13, so on and so forth. Now there's a few things we wanna think about when we look at the number line. First off, numbers increase from left to right. So you can pick any two numbers you want and just think about them for a moment. Let's say I start with something easy like one and two. Well, I know that two is a larger number than one and notice how two is to the right of one on the number line. Let's just pick two other ones. So let's say we look at six and seven. Well, seven is a larger number than six and notice that seven is to the right of six on the number line. So as we move to the right, numbers are increasing in value. So what you can say is that if a number is to the right of another number on the number line, it is a larger number. Then additionally, we can say that numbers decrease from right to left. So if I'm going this way, numbers are decreasing in value. Let's take four and five. Well, four is to the left of five on the number line and four is a smaller number. So what you can say here is that if a number is to the left of another number on the number line, it is a smaller number. All right, before we move on with the lesson, we need to introduce a few new symbols. So the first symbol I'm gonna talk about is the equality symbol. A lot of people just call this the equal sign or equals. So let me put that up there. I'm sure you've seen that before. So this means is equal to. So whatever's on the left is equal to whatever's on the right. You could also think about this as saying whatever's on the left is the same as whatever's on the right. Now it's not always gonna be very straightforward. So let's say I start with something very easy to identify as being equal or the same. So I'm gonna put a five here and a five here. So obviously five is equal to five or five is the same as five. If I have $5 in my wallet and my friend has $5 in his wallet, well we have an equal amount of money or the same amount of money. We can each go to the store and buy $5 worth of stuff. Now, let's say we change up the way this looks a little bit. And to give you an example, let's say I keep my $5 bill in my pocket, but my friend goes to a bill changer and he exchanges his $5 bill for five singles, or you could say five $1 bills. One way you could write this is by showing this as one plus one plus one plus one plus one. So now it doesn't look as straightforward as this, but these two sides represent the same value in the end. If he goes through and adds up his singles, he still has $5, right? This is one plus one, which is two, plus one, which is three, plus one, which is four, plus one, which is five. So each of us can go to the store and spend $5 on stuff. We have the same amount of money or an equal amount of money. So five is equal to, or the same as, one plus one plus one plus one plus one. At the end of the day, the value on each side is five. So another symbol we're gonna use is the not equal to symbol. So here we're gonna draw the equal symbol and we're gonna put a little slash through it. So this means is not equal to. So whatever's on the left is not equal to whatever's on the right. Now it doesn't matter 
what's on the left and what's on the right, as long as they're not equal. So you could have a smaller number on the left and the larger number on the right, or you could put the larger number on the left and the smaller number on the right. It does not matter. So what I'm going to do is say something like, let's say five is not equal to seven. So let's say my friend got two additional dollars. And so now he has $2 more than me to spend. He could spend $7, but I can only spend $5. So the amount of money we have is not the same. It's not equal. Again, this can also be more complicated. So let's say that I have a five here. And let's say over here, keeping with what we did a moment ago, let's say we have one plus one plus one plus one plus one. So that's my five ones. And let's add an additional two here. So here we have one plus one, which is two, plus one, which is three, plus one, which is four, plus one, which is five, plus one, which is six, plus one, which is seven. So five is not equal to, at the end of the day, seven. So it doesn't matter if it's straightforward like this. You're going to see a lot of stuff that's not straightforward, and you need to go through and think about, well, what is the value of this once I perform this operation? Well, this would be seven, and this is five, and five is not the same as seven. So here we can show that with the not equal to symbol. All right, now the next two symbols we'll use for the rest of this lesson. These are called the strict inequalities. We'll talk about non-strict inequalities later on, but for right now, when you talk about a strict inequality, you're talking about a less than symbol or a greater than symbol. So let's start with a less than symbol. So this right here means is less than. So whatever's on the left is less than whatever's on the right. So the way you remember this, when you're looking at these symbols, this guy right here is always pointing to the smaller number. So if I grab two numbers from the number line, let's say two and three, again, two is smaller than three because two is to the left of three on the number line. In order to make this a true statement, I need to put that smaller number on the left and the larger number on the right. So it's very important that you do it this way. If you put here that three is less than two, that's a false statement, okay? So with this one, you wanna make sure that the smaller number is on the left and the larger number is on the right. So you can say that in this case, two or whatever that smaller number is, is less than the three or whatever that larger number is. Then the other guy is going to be the greater than symbol. So this means is greater than. So now the number on the left is larger than the number on the right. So here the number on the right needs to be smaller. The symbol always points to the smaller number. Here it points to two because two is smaller than three. Here it's gonna point to, let's just pick two numbers. Let's say we go with eight and nine. So here it would point to eight because eight's a smaller number. It's to the left of nine on the number line. Nine needs to go over here because it's the larger number. So we would say nine is greater than eight. So whatever the bigger number is goes on the left and that's greater than whatever the smaller number is, that's gonna go on the right. All right, let's go through some examples. I think you're gonna find this very, very easy, but something you'll definitely see in your textbook. So we wanna replace each question mark with the inequality symbol less than or greater than. All right, for the first example, we have five question mark two. So let me write this over here, five, and then we have a question mark and then a two. So first let's circle five and then let's circle two. So five is to the right of two on the number line. So five is a larger number than two. So here I would wanna use a greater than symbol. Again, if you can't remember, the symbol always points to the smaller number. Two is a smaller number than five. So just point the symbol to the smaller number. So here you would say five is greater than two. Now, if we flip this around and let's say the problem was two, question mark five, then now we want to use a less than symbol. Always point the symbol to the smaller number. So this guy right here would point towards two. Two is less than five. Here, five is greater than two. With a greater than, the larger numbers on the left. With a less than, the smaller numbers on the left. All right, for the next problem, we'll look at three question mark zero. Here's three, here's zero. So three is to the right of zero on the number line. So three is going to be a larger number. So we would say that three is greater than zero. Again, that symbol is going to point, let me use a different color here, is gonna to point to that smaller number. Zero is the smaller number. If you flip this around, and let's say you got zero and then question mark three, well now I wanna use a less than. Zero, which is the smaller number, is less than three. The symbol always points to the smaller number. What about the next one? We have four question mark eight. So four question mark eight. Here's four, here's eight. So four lies to the left of eight on the number line. So it's a smaller number. 
So here, we would want to use the less than symbol. Again, the symbol is going to point to the smaller number. If we had gotten 8 question mark 4, well, now we want to use the greater than symbol. 8 is a bigger number. It lies to the right of 4 in the number line. So we would want to say 8 is greater than 4. What about 7 question mark 3? So 7 question mark 3. Here's 7. Here's 3. 7 lies to the right of 3 in the number line. So it's a bigger number. So you want to use a greater than there. Again, the symbol always points to the smaller number. So the symbol would point to 3. If you had gotten 3 question mark 7, well, now you want to use your less than symbol to say 3 is less than 7. Symbol always points to the smaller number. What about 1 question mark 2? Here's 1. Here's 2. So 1 is to the left of 2 on the number line. So you would say 1 is less than 2. Symbol always points to the smaller number. If you got 2, question mark 1, well, then you want to use the greater than symbol. 2 is a larger number than 1. The symbol always points to the smaller number. The smaller number here is 1. 